Well, good evening, and let us begin our evening devotion in prayer. We gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and your truth at the close of the day. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ in whom we are forgiven. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We rest now in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30. For our song tonight, I had a Joaquin pick it out for us. So it's one of his favorites. I didn't know that it was one of his favorites. It is a Sanctuary. So that peacefulness of sanctuary, knowing that God dwells within us, 
is one of the things that can give rest to our restless souls. And so for, for me has also become these devotions and I hope for many of you as well. Tonight we continue with Restless Soul and tonight is a studio in Soho and it's from Nowen's book, The Road to Daybreak. I spent the whole day with Bart Gav Gavigan and Patricia Beal. They first came to see me in Cambridge in May of 1985. They were preparing a film about George Gabelka, the Air Force chaplain turned pacifist. Although we had met for only a few hours, we had experienced a deep bond among us and a sense that Jesus had brought us together to support each other in our spiritual journeys. After celebrating the Eucharist together in the parish church and having a meal in a London restaurant, we went to the Soho district where Bart had rented a studio to cut The Reluctant Prophet, a film about George Zabelka that is now in its final stage of editing. It was quite an experience for me. We walked through the crowded district full of market stalls, porno shops, and shouting people. In the middle of this, of all this craziness, we found Bart's little cutting room. Then we sat watching the beginning of a gripping documentary about a priest who after having blessed those who dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima was converted to a committed peacemaker. It struck me that we were sitting in the dark upstairs studio watching a film about peacemaking while voices of lust and violence surrounded us on all sides. Bart is an unusual filmmaker. When he discovered that in most filmmaking, the communication of ideas and ideals is completely sub subservient to the making of prophets, he joined a Christian community to test his priorities. Now, many years later, he is ready to make films, not for money, but to follow Jesus's way. In this lustful and violent world, he has to risk his money and reputation to do what he feels called to do. But he is determined to do what is just and right, and he trusts that the rest will be given to him. Whew, that's poignant, isn't it? And I mean, it's it's very simple, but poignant. The a a man making a video about a reluctant prophet in a community surrounded by market stalls, porno shops, and shouting people. So as he said, violent and violence and lust all around. And they're watching this video of a man who blessed the bombers who went on to bomb Hiroshima. And then after that act, converted into being a peacemaker. You know, even some of the most beautiful hymns, like Amazing Grace, um, I'll bring that up because it's the easiest one to remember, have such a story behind them. That story of conversion, of, of a point of life that then um, serves as an eye-opening, life-changing moment. And usually on the, in the wake of a lot of destruction and pain, in which things change it's a paul you know saul the paul conversion experience where you know he's he's persecuting the church doing everything that harms the proclamation of the gospel gets struck blind falls off his horse and then's taken care of by his enemies um and listens well he doesn't have a choice he's he's vulnerable and then he's cared for and then he becomes one of the best um, one of the most powerful and prolific apostles of the time. This man, you know, somebody throwing the bomb, um, blessing those who bombed Hiroshima, or as I said earlier, Amazing Grace. Um, the story goes that a slave owner, a, a slave ship owner transporting slaves who realizes the sinful work that he's in the midst of repents and pens one of the most beautiful proclamations of grace of god finding us in the midst of just the yuck in the midst of the lust and the violence that surround us and pulls us out and reorients us for 
the sake of our neighbor, for the sake of ourselves, for the sake of our community and our world, God reorients us. But then also, I'm sure even the, the writer of Amazing Grace, after he made that change, he had to make a business change too. He could no longer transport slaves. I mean, he could have, but he had decided not to. So he had to make other economic choices to be in a line with his, his, his faith, his confession. Have you ever had times that you've had to make those sacrifices? Here's one path that would lead to maybe prosperity, maybe some easiness, maybe um, easiness financially or relationally or whatever. And yet it's ethically a little bit in question or um, you'll, your integrity might be a bit compromised, but depending on your values, you can look at that in different ways. I mean, that seductive way or a way that instead of going for profit, you go for what is right. How wonderful it is when they all both line up, right? How often does that actually happen? It does. But oftentimes the, the faithful, ethical, integrity choice means there'll be some kind of sacrifice. Maybe you'll lose some friends. Maybe you'll lose a job opportunity. Maybe you'll lose an entire way of life. And as now and ends here, that being determined to do what is right and trusting that the rest will be given to you. The freedom and the being freed nature of trusting that God will provide, that God will see you through the storms, God will see you through the sacrifices, and the fact that God has already overcome all of them for you and is along the way with you, continuing to remind your restless soul that you're not alone. In this time, I mean, all uh, schools are hearing about the fall. Um, our economic realities are kind of impacting as more people are furloughed once again. Um, it's hard right now. What is it like in this difficulty, if it's socially difficult, economically difficult, if it's emotionally difficult, if it's all the layers of difficult, what is that like to trust that God will provide all that you need? It is the promise that we have in Christ Jesus, and Jesus is one that keeps, keeps promises. So, as we sacrifice, as we make impossibly hard choices, as we struggle, as we wonder, as we do the best for ourselves and our neighbors, to trust that our souls will be restless until they rest in God. And thankfully, God doesn't wait until we stop, but sometimes God stops us and gathers us and gets this word in our ears so that we can be at peace and know that God will provide. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O oh Lord, God of truth. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. 
Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness, I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Gracious God, we, thank, we give you thanks for the day, especially for the good we were permitted to give and to receive. The day is now past and we commit it to you. We entrust to you the night. We rest securely for you are our help and you neither slumber nor sleep. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now in peace. I will lie down and sleep. You alone, O God, make me secure. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.